Good morning, everybody. My name is Carlene Thomas from the Slavitut Nation in North Vancouver, BC. Welcome. Um, happy to see you here. I've been asked to talk a little bit about indigenization and decolonization of education. And, you know, I was thinking those are really big, big concepts. And it almost, sometimes I feel really overwhelmed on how you could address that. So I think simply if, if I were to be able to go into a school and work with somebody, I think it would be important that the staff, the students have an idea of why there is such a need. So that would be like indigenizing, right? Because in a curriculum in Canada, that dark history, those dark chapters were never shared. So a lot of, so generations of Canadians grew up not knowing about the residential school, about the Indian Act that governs a group of people here in what the country called Canada. For me, it would be really important also to include the local Indigenous First Nation. That is where your institute lies because they have that history, that connection, that tie to the lands and waters. So for example, here in North Vancouver, and as, as you can see my beautiful screen in the background, this is Burrard Inlet. And my people, the name we have for ourselves is called Slavututh. And Slavututh in our language means people of the inlet because our creation story tells us that we come from the lands and waters here. Our first grandfather was transformed from a wolf to a human being. Our first grandmother was transformed from the sediment of the Burrard Inlet into our first grandmother. So we've been brought up with the Shahalmas, that sacred obligation responsibility to protect our lands and waters. That will never go away. It doesn't matter how evolved or how, how far our society comes, you know, not just here in my community, but, you know, in, in the whole entire world, our connections are, are there. That obligation is still there. Again, I guess that could be a form of indigenization, just, you know, allowing people or helping people to learn about the local Indigenous history. As far as decolonization, you know, where I, where I am in my time of life, and, and I guess maybe even the, the work I do, the jobs I held, I always questioned and wondered and really poked at changing policy. You know, processes and policies uh, determine how a people can, uh, how they act, how they, how they work within a, a, a specific system. So I think decolonization for me would be taking a look at some policy that is definitely that is so skewed against, well, because we're talking indigenous against indigenous peoples, and it and it might be just very, um, I don't know what the word would be. It would be very subtle, um, but as far as you know, like the Indian Act goes, you know, the Indian Act is the only piece of legislation in the entire world that determines who a human being is. So for example, when our 
Indian women, because way back in the day, we were called Indians. When our Indian women would marry a non-Indian man, she would lose her status. So that means all her children would lose their status. And that would mean they could not live on the reserve. They could not have, can, they could not have been brought up in that culture. And that set us apart from each other. That was a divisive piece of legislation. And it was a legislation that was set out to ensure that the native population would dissipate. But, you know, besides that label, you know, blood is thicker. We still have those those familial ties, those and and responsibilities as well. Um, so decolonization for me would be, you know, taking look taking a look at policies and procedures, and working with the indigenous community to rebuild what those would look like. Um, and the work that I do right now for the indigenous advisory monitoring committee for the Trans Mountain Pipeline. Part of the work we're doing is looking at monitoring. We're looking at compliance verification. So our monitors go with the, the regulator, the Canada Energy Regulator, when they do inspections. And we're helping to inform um, the inspectors what's important to the indigenous peoples that are connected to that land where wherever that pipeline may be and and we're going in to to check and make sure that the company the proponent is is following all the rules so we're kind of dismantling or decolonizing the Canada energy regulator in that sense because we are participating, we are in partnership with how this regulatory regime would go. So when we think about education, it's important to understand how the local history must be included. Like, you know, in grade four, we learn about the Haida and the Inuit. And for all we know, those they're the only Indigenous people here in Canada, right? I know it's changed a long time ago, but still, it's, it, we're kind of still stuck, stuck there. And in terms of decolonizing in in the post secondary institutes, I think it would be really important to not so much as um, it just really work with the Indigenous communities have indigenous leadership in in those areas that could help people move along and help us move forward because basically what we're looking at is healing a relationship because as my grandfather always taught me they're not going anywhere we are not going anywhere we have to find a way to coexist doesn't mean our ways are better or their ways are better we have to find a way to work together. And for me, that's all I could share with you is making sure we're working together and figuring out where to start, how to start, and who, who, who gets to all be a part of the work. Thank you.